Hey everyone, thanks for joining. So in the previous video, we looked at the sub gigahertz read raw feature on the Flipper Zero, and we were able to capture a raw signal from one of our remotes. I said in the next video that we would take a look at the save file, but before we do that, I wanted to add this video in there for people that maybe aren't familiar with radio frequencies or data encoding. They might be surprised when we get in there and not have enough uh, background information to really understand what they're seeing. The beginning is we have to definitely understand binary and encoding data. If you haven't done much with binary, I highly recommend you watch this video. It's a good introductory to binary. It starts off with kind of what's a bit, zero and one. How do you combine those bits to make bigger numbers? And then when you're done with the video, you should understand that like 101 is a one in the fours place and a one in the ones place. So you combine those and you get a value of five. You should also understand that it's kind of arbitrary when you have, if you have a three digit binary number, what that means is you have eight combinations. What those eight combinations mean can mean anything. It can mean a cat emoji, it can mean the okay button pressed, it could mean a wire is plugged in. And I could have chose that the wire plugged in was actually the buy signal and the buy signal was the wire plugged in. Doesn't, it's up to the author of the protocol to really assign numbers to all these things. Also, if you run out of combinations because you, you've written something and you, you needed 10 things and you only get eight because you use three digits, add another digit, put zeros in front of everything, and you've doubled that number of choices. So if it was 0000, zero, zero, zero is where we started, and 0001 zero, zero, one for hello, then 1111 would have been our 16th option instead of 111, which is only our eighth option. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, watch that video. I'll put a link down below. So now that we know that, the next question is, how do you encode a binary signal or a bit even in radio frequencies? So a bit in radio frequencies, there is no standard way to encode it. What we know is that when we broadcast, we make a tone and then we stop broadcasting and there is no tone. So we can make tones and then stop making tones and the combination of tone and lack of tone or silence, we can combine those to mean a one or a zero. In this first example, I've chosen that if I made a tone for 100 milliseconds and then I was silent for 100 milliseconds, that's what I'm gonna do when I wanna send a one. And so when I wanna send that last one, I'm also gonna do the exact same thing. For a zero, instead, I'm gonna do silence followed by tone. So instead of tone silence, I'm gonna do silence tone. These times also can be any value. It's up to me as the protocol developer to make up the numbers. So I could have used 10 milliseconds all the way across and it would have sent the same signal. It'd just be a lot quicker. You'd hear that beep a lot quicker, maybe not even be able to, as a human, recognize the tones. Another option was instead of one being tone silent and zero being silent tone, we could flip them around and do silent tone as our one and tone silent is our zero. So there's no standard, it could be either way. So one of the disadvantages when we're listening to this is this silence and this silence kind of blur. And so when we're listening to it, we would hear 200 milliseconds of silence. And we'd have to know that 100 milliseconds in on our 200 millisecond signal was, was the end and it was starting a new silence because silence followed by silence or tone followed by tone you can't hear it, you're gonna get 200 milliseconds or however long these two tones are when they combine. So one of the solutions to solving that is what if you did tone followed by silence, but your tone was 200 milliseconds for a one and then your silence. And then for a zero, you only did 100 milliseconds of tone and then you had your silence. So both cases, the silence is the same, but the tone, the length of that tone changes. We could have obviously flipped it around and said that the length of the silence is what changes and that our tones were always the same length and it's just this little burst of sound every so often and it's how quiet was it. That's another way to encode it. There's no right or wrong way for any of these. These are all fine. And then this last one is kind of interesting. And what it is is we did a tone for 200 milliseconds and then a silence for 100, just like the one above. But then when we wanted a zero, we did a tone for 100 and silence for two. Again, remember the numbers don't matter. It's just the relative numbers matter. 
two to one ratio or one to two. The interesting thing about this technique is every bit, whether it's a one or a zero, takes exactly the same amount of time. That might be useful. So again, when we're looking at radio frequencies, we're gonna to have to try to figure out which one of these encodings, or maybe they made a new encoding. Maybe they came up with an encoding that's like, you send the one and then you send a signal saying whether or not it's the same as the last digit or different than the last digit. And that's what your signals are representing. So you're not always sending the same thing for a one. It's based on the previous digit as to whether or not it's what you send. So there's all kinds of encodings you're gonna find out there. And it really depends on that read raw remote that you happen to have grabbed and, and are scratching your heads. And again, these these when they do this stuff, it's super tricky because the 100, 100 combined, when you're looking at it, you're seeing a 200 millisecond silence and you got to think like, is that 200 really 200? Or is it, is it 50 and 150 or 150 and 50 or 100, 100? What, what am I looking at here? Or maybe it's just a 200 number. So, And then finally, let's look at a typical signals. This is not by any means the only way to do it, but a lot of times what I've seen, and I'm really new to this space, like I started it last month, so I'm no expert, I'm a noob. But a lot of times what I've seen is that for RF signals, they send a preamble. They send some kind of thing at the beginning and it usually looks different than the main data. Maybe it's like a longer burst of tone and then a longer silence, something like that. Usually they also make some amount of silence before the preamble starts. So if they're playing the same button over and over again, there's usually a gap of silence I find. And that gap is usually bigger than any of the other numbers in here. A lot of times I use that to help me figure out where this preamble might be starting. So they have some unique tone that's the preamble. And then they have the data and that data can be any data they want. We talked about sending a five, which would be like button number five. So the data could have just been, they do a 101 following one of these different encoding schemes. If they do that and that's all they do, and then they have the conclusion, the conclusion's nothing, it's just silence from now on. So maybe they have a long tone, a silent tone, and then they send their 101 using one of the schemes. That works. However, and you don't even have to have the preamble. They could have just sent the 101 with nothing at the front, nothing, at just silence on both sides. And that would work. However, typically I see a preamble. I see some kind of special thing at the beginning for based on the kind of remote. And then the data typically has more than just the information they're trying to send. It's more than just a wire was connected or the cat emoji. It's things that are like, what serial number is this? So that different remotes of the same brand don't just turn on the thing. In some cases, they want that to happen. They want all the exact same Sony model number TVs, regardless of the serial number, to just turn it on. So they don't send a serial number, right? They, the vendor is Sony, so they send some code to represent Sony for them. And then they send some code to represent that it's some kind of a TV that's an RF TV. Uh, most TVs I understand are infrared, but this is just an example. And then the button number is that 101, but you could send anything in front of it. Sometimes there's a really big number in front of it, like 20 bits or something, 30 bits. And they're like, oh, well, no one's ever going to guess this huge number because there's a billion combinations. Well, now with the flipper, we just go into read raw. We listen. When someone presses that button, we have that unique number. And now we can retransmit that unique number. And then at the end, it sends the button number and we can change the button number to be something else. So sure, we heard someone signal for lock this thing, lock my front door. But unfortunately, we just tweak that little button number and we rebroadcast it and it's unlock with that secret serial number. Nowadays, there's a lot of rolling codes and other things I'm not going to get into in this video, but you get the idea. Uh, my fireworks remote, unfortunately, does just rely on a big secret number nobody knows, except for it's in my GitHub now, or it will be soon, and then the button of which firework you're trying to launch. So after you sent that data, you can just have silence, or you could send some extra conclusion sequence that's different than the data that's maybe a long tone followed by silence. And that would let you know that, yes, we're done transmitting.
Then in the middle here is the concept of a checksum or a parity or some way to tell that the data you got is actually the correct data. So maybe while you were listening, something else sent some interference. And so the ones become zero or the zero become one. The checksum or the parity or other different ways to validate that the data you got is correct. One thing we could have done was send the same message again, but backwards. So we could send 001 and then followed by 100. And then the device that receives the signal, when it gets it, it looks at the code and then it looks at the backwards code and make sure that the backwards code is backwards of what was sent. And the interference isn't likely to be played in a backwards pattern. So that may work. Perhaps sending all those extra backwards signals takes too long. And so people might calculate a different value based on what they were sending. As they're sending the zeros and ones, they calculate some other number. So maybe our algorithm is we start off at zero and we only have a one digit we're gonna send. We start off at zero and we are gonna send that number which starts at zero. And then every time we send it, if we send a one, we switch it. So it starts at zero, at zero, zero, zero. So we never switched it. So now we transmit our zero as our check. And then here we have a zero, zero, one. So now we switch it because there's a one. So we switched it from zero to one and then we would add a one at the end. And then here we'd have, we start at zero and we go zero, one. So we'd switch it to a one, zero. So we keep it and we'd put a one at the end. And then zero, one, one. So we'd switch it for the one and then we'd switch it back to a zero at the end. So we'd go one, zero, one, one, and now a zero because there was two switches. Exam that's just an example. There's lots of different schemes. Part of your job is to try to figure out which scheme they've used. Did they do backwards messages? Did they flip the zeros to ones, ones to zeros? Did they have some smaller number at the end that's changing based on the signals? There's no one answer. It's a lot of fun to try to figure out some of these. And uh, luckily there are a lot of different standards and libraries that can help calculate these things. So people are likely to use one of the more standard ways to calculate their checksums. If you know what those standard ways are and you know about the size of the data, you can sometimes guess at how they did it and figure out what those checksums are. Great, well, I hope this has been helpful. And again, in the next video, I am going to look at the flipper zero, the saved files from our read raw, and we're going to look at it and we're going to see a bunch of tones and silences. And we're going to try to figure out what that remote was sending and how that particular person that created that remote, how they decided they wanted to send the data. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Um, one last thing is that there's actually the FCC ID IO. You can go there and if the device you have has that FCC number on the back, you can go into FCC ID IO, type in that number and see stuff like the picture from the outside of the device, the picture of the inside of the device, what frequencies they probably got permission to broadcast on, and maybe some other information that will help you understand how they're choosing to encode their RF signal and what they're thinking of for ones and zeros. That's a great site to check out and paste in those FCC numbers that are on, they're usually really small print, but they're usually on most everything you get that's transmitting. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next video. And if you have any feedback or comments, please paste them below. Thanks a lot.